as some of you may or may not know, uh, we Christians here in America have it easy as far as the government clamping down on what we say, which isn't to say that uh, they don't try and get after us every once in a while. But well, it's and that nothing, will change. Well, it's going to change, but it's nothing in compared to some where some of the other places here. Like this story's uh, just over in Great Britain, you know, uh, somewhere here that you know we usually think of as sort of very akin to us Americans, you know, mm-hmm. common heritage and whatnot. Right, a uh, civilized, free yes. world Western mm-hmm. country. Um, this article is from the Telegraph UK by David Harrison. A police community support officer ordered two Christian preachers to stop handing out gospel leaflets in a predominantly Muslim area of Birmingham, England. The evangelists say that they were threatened with arrest for committing a hate crime and were told they risked being beaten up if they returned. The incident will fuel fears that no-go areas for Christians are emerging in British towns and cities as the Reverend, Right Reverend, R.T. Right Reverend, Michael Nazir Ali, the Bishop of Rochester, claimed in the Sunday Telegraph this year. Arthur Cunningham, 48, and Joseph Abraham, 65, both full-time evangelical ministers, have launched legal action against West Midlands police, claiming the officer infringed their right to profess their religion. Mr. Abraham said, I couldn't believe this was happening in Britain. The Bishop of Rochester was criticized by the Church of England recently when he said there were no-go areas in Britain, but he was right. There are certainly no-go areas for Christians who want to share the gospel. Last night, Christian campaigners described the officer's behavior as deeply alarming. The preachers, both ministers in Birmingham, were handing out leaflets on Alum Rock Road in February when they started talking to four Asian youths. A police community support officer, a PCSO, I guess as they're called here in England because it gives the, uh, mm-hmm. gives the abbreviation there in the article, interrupted the conversation and began questioning the ministers about their beliefs. They said when the officer realized they were American, although both had lived in Britain for many, many years, he launched a tirade against President Bush and the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Mr. Cunningham said, I told him that this had nothing to do with the gospel we were preaching, but he became very aggressive. He said we were in a Muslim area and were not allowed to spread our Christian message. He was said we were committed at committing a hate crime by telling the youths to, leave, youths to leave Islam and said that he was going to take us to the police station. The preacher refused to give the PCSO his address because he felt the officer's manner was threatening and intimidating. Wow. That's the beginning of the end. Yeah, that's you got uh, a little more to add there. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, got a got another another couple sentences here, but that's in Great Britain, folks. I mean, come on. The ministers claim he was also advised not he also advised them not to return to the area. As he walked away, the PCSO said, "You have been warned. If you come back here and get beaten up, well, you have been warned." West Midlands West Midlands police, who refused to p- apologize said the incident had been fully investigated and the officer would be given training in understanding hate crime and communication. Hmm. Wow. Well, there you have it, folks. Great Britain. They're clamping down. Uh, I mean, if there's certain places where you're not allowed to share the the gospel because there's some other religion there and you're not allowed, you know, what's the church going to do other than go to jail? Uh, they're going to go to jail. I mean, that's like the Islamic world. I mean, that's you sure. can't share it there. Actually, to be fair, even in Israel, you're not allowed to convert people, from what I understand. I've heard that, although I know some people do have Christian churches there. and you know, who knows? Yeah, but I, I mean, as far as like street converting, oh, yeah. thing, I, from what I understand. Well, the difference is in Israel, I don't think they chop your head off. Yeah, I hope not. You never can tell these days. Yeah, yeah of course they did you know, saw the prophets in two. Well, I'm not excusing Israel for their sins, yeah. certainly. Yeah. I just I don't like seeing people being removed from their heads. Yes. Well, that is just so disturbing. Yeah. That you cannot share your faith and and, and have any kind of debate because it's considered a hate crime if you do that. Well, I tell you, I I run across a story every couple months about the exact same thing happening in cities all across Canada. Well, Dr. Future predicts that in the next 18 to 24 months that will be our situation here. I wouldn't be surprised. And I think there's something big a brewing, and it's... For example, if yeah. you go up to Detroit, where you have a large Arabic population, you have a large Islamic population, um, if you went into certain neighborhoods there, I bet you in 18 to 24 months, you'll be guilty of the same thing. Wow. And not just there. You know, there's other places in the country, yeah. same thing could be said. Yeah. It's uh, sad. I, I, this is extremely disturbing, and ladies and gentlemen, 
you we need to be proactive. The best thing to do is get a hold of your elected officials and get these hate crime laws clarified and yeah, they're, make they're sure they're that there is freedom of speech and a first amendment. And I tell you, if you if if your country, whether you're in the U.S. or wherever, uh, turns over your sovereignty to supernatural entities, whether it's the North American Union or whatever, a lot of these freedoms we have, like the First Amendment, which you have to fight for to keep, will be moot at that point. Mm-hmm. And and they'll say whatever they think is best to keep the peace, and that'll be the mm-hmm. end of the story. Yeah. Well, we'll be back. You know, a lot of Christians don't really think about all the um, at length about what all went on with with sharing the gospel and spreading the gospel throughout history. People were regularly killed and imprisoned. Mm -hmm. Uh, What was that Ethiopian minister or Ethiopian soldier, Maurice? He led a, he led a band of Christians and this was during the Roman empire Hmm. before Christianity was official, Mm -hmm. official, the Roman religion. They, uh, uh, he said, look, you need to bow before Caesar. He said, we'll fight your wars, but we're not going to bow. Mm-hmm. So they lined all 600 people up and killed one out of every 10. Yeah, and decimated. And then, it, then he said, okay, now bow. And he said, no, we're still not going to do it. So they went through it again, and they did that three times and then ended up killing everybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, and well, I, don't, I, don't see that, I don't see that kind of thing happening. Yeah, you know, foreign missionaries mm-hmm. used to be concerned about what would happen to them if they, you know, went in headhunter area or things like that. Yeah, like now they we're going to be killed. Well, yeah. now we're going to have home missionaries. They're going to be concerned about that. That's scary. Well, man. What if your child shares their faith or the fact that they went to a vacation Bible school with the kids at school, and mm-hmm. they go back and say, "Here's yeah. what these kids told me." Oh Tossed no, it's in a the clink. I know yeah. it's a hate crime. That think you about that, folks. Well, and and don't just think about it. Um, start, start doing s- something. Start about sending it. information to. Yeah. You. Right now, there is hate crime legislation on our books that all this can be weaved in as part of it, unless we take a proactive action, and that's that's our charge to you. Uh, Brother Merv's going to share with us a little bit about how you can send some feedback to us. Uh, we know we let our hair down a little bit here on Fridays, even more so than Monday through Thursday. Yeah. But um, we would love to hear from you about any kind of topics you'd like to discuss, and let us know in an email if we can share your email. But Merv will tell you more about that. Yeah. So no further ado, Merv, uh, share with our listeners a little bit how they can find out more about our show and send us some feedback. Future Quake radio broadcasts are archived at www.futurequake.com suitable for downloading or streaming, as well as other show information. Email Dr. Future and Tom Bionic at drfuture at futurequake.com. That's D-R-F-U-T-U-R-E at futurequake.com. Tell us your name, city, and radio station or internet, and if we can use your name on air. Comments on the show's topics or guests or suggestions for future show topics or guests are most welcome. Dr. Future and Tom will discuss selected emails each week during the radio broadcast. We hope this information is extremely useful for you as a listener and well and worth your time. if not, at least entertaining. <laughs> yeah, we, we've got to go. We'll come back and have somebody important to talk to on here other than us uh, starting Monday. And we hope you really enjoy Future Quake. Listen to what Merv said. Send us some feedback. And until then, we hope the rest of your week is very bright. What do you Mahalo. guys Uh, Yeah, same to you, and more of it. We'll see you next time. Join us next time as we dare to experience another aftershock of a future quake. 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 There are new dreams crowding out old realities. There's revolution sweeping like a fresh new breeze.